Last January, a bill ordering the creation of a mixed-gender prayer space at the Western Wall was passed. But nearly one year has passed and nothing has been built. So as we just reported, over 100 women marched with Toraz in hand towards a holy site in Jerusalem this morning in protest against the government's refusal to act. Joining me in the studio today is Rabbi Neil Balkin, the Director of Diaspora Affairs at the Israeli Reform Movement, and he's here to help explain what's going on. Thanks so much for coming Shalom. in. Nice so the bill was passed. Why is that not enough to build the section? What is the government waiting for? Well, the government is not waiting for anything except for the fact that the Haredim, the, the ultra-Orthodox uh, parties within the government, is, is uh, uh, threatening Netanyahu that if he fulfills the agreement that they signed on originally, that they will withdraw from the government. And therefore, the bill has passed a year ago, as you said, but the implementation of the bill is not happening because of the threat of the ultra-Orthodox parties to leave the government. So we are in a kind of a very tricky situation where we for a several months discussed and negotiated this bill with, with all the parties and behind the scenes were the leaders of the ultra-Orthodox community as well. And once we signed the bill and, and the government passed it within its own decision uh, and nothing happened, we had nothing else to do but protest. Now, why is this such an issue? I know that seems like a very basic question, but what are the problems with building this shared section for those of our viewers who are not aware? Uh, we have to start from the beginning. The Western Wall, the Kotel, is one of the holiest places for Jews, maybe the holiest place for Jews around the world, including Israel. And the majority of the Jewish population outside of Israel, I'm talking about more than 4 million Jews living outside of Israel, are looking up to the Western Wall and expecting to be appreciated for their beliefs. They're, they're expecting the government of Israel to allow them to practice their, the way, their way of Judaism in an egalitarian and fair way. And the bill had to do a very simple thing. The bill just had to extend the existing Israel section, which is south of the local section in the Western Wall, and to the, have the platform higher than the, one it, the, the way it is now, bigger and higher, and have the entrance to the Western Wall just one. Because the current situation is that the Israel section, which was decided on a few years ago by Minister Bennett, now we have it very low, very small, with a separate enter, entrance. And what we would expect the uh, Israeli government to do is appreciate the Jews living outside of Israel. And uh, as we always say, the state of Israel is the state of the Jews wherever they are. And therefore, appreciation of their behaviors and their ways of living is something which we cannot wait any, any longer. Now, violence broke out today uh, at this protest, and I think we can all agree that that behavior is not condoned. Uh, but how can such a scene be avoided in the future? Or is this something we're going to keep on seeing, uh, given the current uh, situation? I must describe to you, uh, I was there before 6 a.m. in the morning and experienced what, what, what you were just describing. And in fact, we were about, I wouldn't exaggerate, three to 350 people walking with 12 Torah scrolls into the main plaza of the Western Wall, uh, wanting the women's section or the women of the wall to take one or two Torahs and enter their section with no men and fulfill their desire to pray there with Torah at the Rosh Chodesh service, uh, Shacharit service in the morning. We were walking and people paid by the, by the uh, Kotel um, Heritage uh, Foundation uh, were beating us up. And uh, all we did is holding the Torah. And we surrounded the people who held the Torah just to make sure that the Torah is not hurt. Uh, a lot of my friends got really hit. They were, they were smugged and, and, and they were kicked and they were uh, tried to be pushed aside. The head of the uh, reform movement in Israel was on the floor as well as the head of the conservative movement, Izhar, Izhar Hes. It was a very, very sad point and I agree with you. Violence is not the way and, uh, and th th there must be a respect to our need uh, to show the entire world that the Jewish state respects all its denominations. Do you think the protesters expected that to happen? I, you know what? The only thing uh, the protest protesters wanted is to have a shacharit service at the Western Wall. I mean, there was not a protest. 
Uh, can you imagine a, uh, a woman being uh, avoided from entering a synagogue in North America or in Europe or in Asia and, and, uh, and not holding a siddur, a prayer book? Can you imagine a woman being told not to enter a synagogue or a section in the synagogue? In our opinion, this is unheard of. So this was not a protest. This was a desire of people to uh, uh, actually uh, express their way of, of behavior and, and their way of, of, of praying at the wall. Now, the Israeli prime minister has, I guess, in a way, come out against the idea of protesting, saying that there should be a more quiet way that this issue can be solved. Do you believe that there is a way to address this issue without people standing up and going to the Western Wall and, and you know, praying in the manner that they prayed today? Well, it's interesting that the Prime Minister have issued this, this uh, announcement today because it's on the Prime Minister's responsibility that this bill, which we, he signed on, has been postponed for over a year. Um, so my expectation from the Prime Minister is, is to look around him and instead of, of, of uh, accusing international bodies like UNESCO for uh, 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 putting aside Israel and, and, and cursing Israel, having looked at himself and see how he, by his own actions, his own government's action, is really postponing and, and, and uh, uh, not allowing uh, the liberal movements, the progressive movements around the world and in Israel, and I would say, uh, pronounce their way of, of thinking. Uh, we were not violent. We, this is not our way. And, and indeed, if the prime minister would implement the agreement, we will be there uh, the first one to be there and, and, and be happy about it. It's his internal government and he, his own government he needs to, to do the, the discussion with, not with us. We have agreed. We have signed it. Who are some of the major parties that are behind this movement and, and how did you get involved? Which movement are you talking about? The reform movement in Israel? Yeah, the, the reform, reform movement. Well, there's, you know, organizations the like uh, Women of the Wall and so on and so forth. The, the, the reform movement internationally is, is a movement that was created about 250 years ago in Germany. Uh, modernity came to place uh, 250 years ago. Jews were allowed to go to universities and the Enlightenment was, was also welcoming Jews in the society and Jews wanted to maintain their Judaism. And as a result of that, the reform movement, the reform Jewish movement, have, have established its stream. Um, the orthodoxy uh, is obviously didn't like it. They wanted people to stay in the shtetl, in the city, in, in the old uh, framework of Jewish behaviors, which of course did not fit most of the Jews at, of the time. So it started in Central Europe, it moved then to North America, and for about 60, 65 years, the movement has moved in, in, into Israel and, and has established so far over, six, over 65 uh, synagogues and communities here, congregations. And, uh, and uh, I would say, just a rough number, I would assume 250,000 Israelis now aff affiliate themselves with the reform and progressive movements. Uh, as I said before, over 300, 3 million Jews around the world are part of the so progressive that's, movement. So that's what I actually want to ask about. You know, a lot of the people that I guess would be more affected by, uh, you know, the creation of an egalitarian prayer plaza would be foreign Jews, Jews are here that are traveling. How do you think, uh, you know, having this type of prayer space would influence foreign Jewry? I think I think you're so right. I mean, this will impact the foreign Jewry, foreign tourists who come here and would like to perform a service, a ceremony within the Western Wall area, and not be separated from the children who are coming. Uh, uh, to the age of bar or bat mitzvah, but it's not only for them. I, I must tell you that living in Israel and, and, and being originally uh, from the secular Israeli society uh, uh, as a child, I, I also faced a situation where you know you want to find a place, one of the holiest places for the Jews, and, and you wanted to get closer to uh, uh, to God, and you wanted to be uh, uh, among people who you like, and you had to be separated. My own bar mitzvah had to be away from the women who uh, uh, were part of my life. My mother was not there, my sister was not there, my grandmother was not there. Why? Because we had to niche ourselves in the men's section, and that was a, that was a pity, and, and we're trying to change it not only for foreign Jews, but also and mainly for the Israeli population, the secular population who's willing to have this area. 
So I guess as a final question, you know, what do you think this issue says about Israeli society today, given the fact that, you know, we're seeing Palestinians and Israelis fight over lots of holy sites in Jerusalem, but Jews themselves are fighting internally over these spaces? You know, history tells us that uh, internal fights are not healthy. And we did the utmost to prevent all the internal fight that we see these days around holy places and, and in other areas, you know, the mikvaot, the mikvaot bill, the, the mikveh bill, uh, which does not allow progressive Jews to enter. Um, this is a bill that was passed just a few months ago, and we are again being uh, discriminated and, and put aside. Uh, all those actions of, of ultra-religious uh, ultra parties uh, to segregate the Israeli society between um, the ultra-orthodoxy and the secular Israelis is not going to happen anymore. This is a train that left the station already. We are, we are beyond that. We're at the stage that Jews in Israel are interested in pluralism, in an egalitarian way of pronouncing and, and behaving, and are not willing to go back to the old paradigm saying, I'm either an ultra-Orthodox or I'm none. They want their spiritual life to be expressed also in those places of, of sacred, uh, sacred moments. Well, thank you so much for coming, and I guess we're just going to see what the future of, uh, of the implementation of an egalitarian plaza will be. Thank you very much for hosting me.